Chicken pot pie is so many people's favorite comfort food, including one of my own. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make it entirely from scratch from start to finish. So today chicken was on sale and I got these three legs for $5. They might not be the greatest for every cooking method, but they're going to be perfect for this. Now if you have some leftover rotisserie chicken lying around, you don't have to go through this step. But because I did say I was going to make this entirely from scratch, I felt like I had to deliver. So cover all these ingredients with cold water until they're just submerged, and now we're going to bring it to a boil over high heat. Not only are we cooking our chicken, we're also making a stock, which we're going to need for the recipe. Here and there you're going to notice a little scum forming on the surface. Skim it off every time you see it. That's the impurities coming out of the chicken meat, and if you don't get rid of it, the stock can get cloudy. So once this comes to a boil, reduce the heat and let it simmer for two to three hours. Again, if this sounds like too much time for you, you can easily replace the stock with any good store-bought brand. So while this simmers away undisturbed, now we can make the pastry. And for that, I'm going to combine a pound of flour with one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then I'm going to cut in five ounces of butter and five ounces of lard. You can do this part in a food processor, but I prefer to do it the old-fashioned way with a good old pastry blender. With old-fashioned recipes like this one, I tend to stick to old-fashioned methods. But anyway, you want to keep cutting it in until your mixture resembles coarse oats. Now into 5 ounces of ice cold water, I'm going to add 1 ounce of vodka. You can use vinegar if you want to instead. Whatever you use, that's going to help make our pastry more tender and flaky. So keep adding your liquid bit by bit until everything comes together. You don't want to overmix it. While it's still crumbly, you want to divide this into two. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic and dump half of it on there, and I'm going to use the plastic wrap to sort of bunch it into a ball. Then once it all comes together, just wrap it up and flatten it into a nice tight disc. Now I'm going to do that to the other half of the dough, and before we can use this, we have to let it chill in the fridge for at least one hour. So while that's going on, let's check on our chicken. This is after about two and a half hours, and as you can see here, the meat is pretty much melting off the bones, exactly what we're looking for. So now we're going to take it off the stove and let it cool for a few minutes, and then we're going to strain it. I'm only going to need about half the stock for the recipe, so the other half I'm going to freeze and use it another time. And once the chicken is cooled enough to handle, the best tool to remove all the meat from the bones is your good old fashioned hands. So go ahead and get in there and rip off all the meat. And if you're enjoying this video and you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then please consider doing so and don't forget to hit that little bell. Please like, share, comment, all these little things help out the channel so much and I really appreciate it. Because all the flavor has been boiled out of those vegetables, I'm just going to throw them away. So once this is completely strained, I'm going to take half of it and let it cool off in a plastic container and then freeze it. The other half, I'm just going to set aside for now. And right into that same stock pot, without even washing it, I'm going to melt 65 grams of butter. And once that's nice and hot, I'm going to add some onion and let that sweat off for about a minute. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt and just let this saute for two to three minutes until the onions look translucent. You don't want them to turn brown at all. Now I'm going to sprinkle in 65 grams of flour and a teaspoon of dry thyme and a teaspoon of dried sage. Stir this around for about 30 seconds until everything's nice and toasty. You also don't want to see any traces of dry flour left. Now quickly whisk in your stock. The faster you whisk here, the smoother your sauce is going to be. It won't really start thickening until it comes to a boil, and when it does, reduce the heat to a simmer and let it cook for about 7 to 10 minutes, just to get rid of the raw flour taste. Now add in your chicken and frozen vegetables. It's probably going to stop boiling when you add this, but just bring it back to a simmer and let it cook for another 10 minutes. That's mostly to cook the vegetables. If you notice things are getting a little too thick, just add an extra half to one cup of extra chicken stock. In fact, you're very likely going to have to. Now give it a final seasoning with salt and pepper, and that's it. Your chicken pot pie filling is done. So now on a lightly floured surface, I'm going to start rolling out the pastry. How you choose to do this is up to you, but I'm going to be making half a dozen 5-inch pies today. But if you want to make one large pie to feed a crowd right now, by all means do so. And you don't even have to use pie crust. If you'd rather use puff pastry or biscuit dough as a topping, that's another way to do it. But I find myself making it this way most often. Making individuals is very convenient because they can be frozen and reheated later for a quick weeknight meal. However you do this, if you are making a bottom crust, be sure to leave enough overhang so that you can seal it later. You also want to make sure your filling is cooled completely before you fill your shells, because then the butter's going to melt in the pastry and it'll end up being soggy. Before putting the top on, I always rub a little water around the edge of the pastry and then I press it firmly into it. If you don't do this, then it doesn't seal properly and then the filling can bubble out. I always like to trim off the excess pastry with scissors and then crimp the edges with a fork. Not only does it look really nice, but it helps seal them even more. 
Now I'm gonna beat an egg really well for some egg wash. Some people like to add water to this, but I did not today. And now I'm gonna generously brush this over each pie. And last but not least, we have to cut little steam vents on the top of each one. That's also going to help prevent overbubbling. Now bake these in a preheated 375 Fahrenheit oven for 40 to 50 minutes. If you're doing one large pie, it might take closer to an hour. But in either case, this is what it's going to look like. You want to let it rest for several minutes before diving into it. And while these were baking, I did manage to cook off some oven fries, which I almost burnt, but I did not. And because I was a little impatient and did not let this pie rest for long enough, it kind of collapsed on me, but that's okay. Because a lot of the best comfort food is also the sloppiest, wouldn't you say? By the way, what's your favorite comfort food? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, whether you choose to make this the long way like I did, or use a faster track method, I know you're not going to be disappointed. 